Um, so, just listening to your talk, I just uh, wanted to address the, the comment you made about Russia and China. Yep. Um, vetoing the uh, General Assembly with the, the security. Syria? Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the issue I have with it is that, I mean, we're looking back in the last year of uh, all the invasions that's taken place, and nothing good's coming on it. Yes. Um, the the like, fortunate thing I see in Russia and China is the fact that they're stopping all potential World War III. Yes. So, well, and at the same time, you're saying that you know Canada has to mobilize and put uh, efforts into its infrastructure, which is exactly what Russia and China do, and they recognize that. And yes, granted, they haven't been um, good representation of you know speaking for the, the public there, but in the last uh, couple of months they've changed their tune and now they're supporting Syria. They're I'm, supporting not sure Iran. I'm not sure I understand why we should not be unhappy about the way China has behaved relating to Syria. Because the DRE has a long conversation. An interaction there. Why you should be unhappy. Yeah, why, why, should we be, be unhappy, why should we not be unhappy with uh, China, with the way they behave relating to Syria in the United Nations? I, well, the, facts, the I, fact is, there's two facts to that. Yeah. The one is that you're not going to be able to um, deal with all the devastation, right, of, you talking about environmental devastation, how much environmental uh, devastation will we have if you have another war in Syria? And then another issue would be the potential um, aggression and agitation you're building up with Syria and Iran, which will involve Russia and China, which will result in a third world war. Now, I disagree with you. I don't really understand your logic. I understand your motivation in saying these things, but at some stage, we need to have United Nations action relating to what is happening in Syria. 5,000 men, women, and children slaughtered and more every single day? You don't want to put a stop to that? What, do you, what would you do? Get the CIA out of it. It's, it's quite simple. The same pattern is being repeated over and over. If you go look at uh, historians like Webster Tarpey, um, economists like uh, Lyndon LaRouche, the, the details are uh, have revealed themselves. We know what they're doing. We know that the United Nations isn't in the best interests of the people that are representing them. And that they're going in there to just claim resources to continue their bank monopolies and their monetary system. Okay, I understand your point. I disagree with you. I think the United Nations is much better than that. I think the United Nations has a marvelous potential for the future for a much better world, and I think we desperately need a much better world. That, that's why we're in the situation we're in, because of the United Nations. I disagree. Yeah. Hi, Mel. Thank you for um, your very kind <coughs> your words this evening. And uh, a very quick question. Uh, I was, in, in many ways, money is a lot more powerful than votes, and I was wondering what you thought about uh, one of the suggestions that came out of the Occupy movement, which was that Canadians should withdraw their money from the major banks and place them in credit, credit unions instead. Yeah. Um, I think that's a hell of a good idea. I think that's a great idea. I think you know the, bank, the banks are way too powerful in this country, and anything we can do to spread money around and, and spread the power around would be infinitely better than what we've got right now. I agree with you. All right, one more question. Oh, two more questions, and then that's it for the evening. Got it. Who is that young person there? This is Chief. Wow. Okay. Please, go ahead, sir. 164. Oh, 164. Okay, that's a good number. <laughs> that's the answer to the universe. <laughs> Hi, my name is Allison Brown. Um, I'm just, uh, I have a quick question. Um, just like Googling it here, I can see that in the last election, the Conservative Party actually only has 39.6% of the vote. Let's elaborate on that for a minute. This man, who, according to the Global Mail and according to the National Post, uh, is the forefront of this 
fantastic wave of conservative domination of the political process in this country has never, ever once had 40% of the electorate support. Never once. So, yeah, and, and that was my point. And I was just wondering whether you support some kind of elect electoral reform. Absolutely. Like the STB, which we tried to do in Vancouver, but it didn't work yeah, or something. Yeah. What would you recommend and how do we do it? And just on a hopeful note, here's yeah. the future of Canada, so we've got something to be optimistic okay, well, about. Well, in my next book, the first, the first chapter is going to be on electoral reform. We desperately need, in this country, to have electoral reform. It's ridiculous to have so many millions of people going out to vote and then not getting their votes reflected in what happens in the House of Commons. That's right. We've got a lousy, lousy system, and, and it's also the same in provincial elections. We need to have a modified form of proportional representation. And if we could ever get that, we'd have a much, much better country. It wishes for horses. It's so okay. capitalism real well. Do you know what, you guys? Thank you for being so glad. Yeah, back on the cell. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Quick question. I've got to listen to you once. Go ahead. I just have one more question since you've said it about 20 times tonight about getting rid of somebody, that person in Ottawa, well, about 20. Uh, 200 people acro across Canada ask me, is there some way, legal way, to get rid of Mr. Harper before 2015? Send him on the Italian cruise line. Other than that. <laughs> okay, I've got to go, and thank you. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you very much.